Hello, and I'm going to show you how to make a really delicious carrot cake. Perfect for Easter, perfect for Mother's Day. Um, I'm Lisa Marley, and I'm a plant-based chef. So um, I've weighed out my ingredients and done a little bit of prep, but I'll just talk you through the ingredients. So for my dry ingredients, I've got light brown sugar, and I've also got self-raising flour, and I've got some really lovely spices. I've got ground ginger, and I've got some um, allspice, which I really like. They actually remind me quite of Christmas spices, but they work really well in a carrot cake. And I've got some raising agents, so bicarbonate soda, and also I've got, um, you know, uh, oh, baking powder. Forgot the, forgot the name but never mind. So my uh, wet ingredients, I've got plant milk and to the plant milk I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar and I've got two bananas that I've mashed, some vegetable oil and some obviously some carrot because it is a carrot cake. So the reason I put the apple cider vinegar into the um, plant milk because it makes it, it curdles it and it makes it a little bit like a traditional buttermilk but obviously there's no dairy in this, there's no uh, animal products whatsoever. So the first part of this video or this post I'm going to show you how to make the cake and the second part I'm going to show you how to decorate it rather than do it in one post. So uh, these are really handy because they're already cut out for you, they're baking non-stick uh, baking paper and I've got a loose bottom what? I've got a loose bottom, that was my joke, I don't know why I bother, it's rubbish, uh, a loose bottom cake tin and these are six inch and I just like them, I prefer them to like a nine inch one because um, I think they look cuter and you can stack them but that's just my preference, if you do have just traditional size cake tins then I would uh, split it into two rather than three. So in they go, so easy. Uh, saves you faffing around and these are all non-stick tins as well. Preheated my oven, I'm going to post the recipe underneath as well. So let's combine our wet ingredients. I'm going to do it in two different bowls just for the purposes of the demonstration. I wouldn't normally, normally I just whack it all in. So in goes the plant milk and the butter, uh, sorry the buttermilk but the plant milk and the apple cider vinegar. To that I'm going to add the banana which I've mashed quite well, get all that in because we want it to be everyone's favourite word, moist. Give that a little mix round. Do you remember there was a whole thing about the word moist where no one would say it or it really cringed people out. I like a moist cake, I don't like a dry cake. Anyway, <laughs> fascinating. So to that, I'm going to add my vegetable oil. You could use coconut oil as well, but I'm gonna use vegetable oil because I just, it works really well. And give that a stir around. And that's actually what gives it, you know, keeps it really tender and soft and squidgy and moist. There I go again. And it doesn't look too attractive at the moment, but don't worry about that. And then in goes my grated carrot. The thing about carrot cake is it never really tastes of carrot, but then carrots are quite a mild taste, aren't they? But you know, it has all that carrot in there and that's gotta be, it's gotta count for something, hasn't it? So before I add that to my dry ingredients, I'm gonna add the raising agents. Just give that a little stir around. And also I can get rid of any lumps because I find that brown sugar tends to clump together more than say a, a white caster sugar. Give that a really good stir. So you can see all that, and what happens is when you bake it, the carrot will release moisture as well, and sugars, so it's gonna be lovely and sweet. It's like beetroot, you know, when you add beetroot to a cake or sweet potato, they just work so well. Right, so let's give, actually, let me give myself a bigger spoon than a teaspoon. So let's go to our dry ingredients, and add a generous, teaspoon of baking powder, generous teaspoon of bicarb, and then in goes our spices, and then I'm gonna give that a really good stir. I just like to make, I like to make a cake, 
for Mother's Day for my mother. Actually, to be honest, she actually asked me to make this cake, which she doesn't really do very often, so I thought, why not? And the sun is shining, it's, a it's gonna be a lovely weekend. We're actually gonna attempt a barbecue. Of course, a plant-based barbecue. You'll be thinking, well, what would you have on a plant-based barbecue? Pretty much everything you'd have on a traditional barbecue with uh, all, no, no animal products. So, um, but burgers work really well. You can make your own burgers or you can buy them, the plant burgers. There's some fantastic ones out there. Beyond Burger, Moving Mountains, even store brands own ones are really, really good. And sausages, all plant-based. And I prefer them, well, obviously. <laughs> But you know, I used to, you know, back in the day, I did, uh, you know, I did have sausages, and I never used to eat them even when I, you know, would eat meat. So, but plant sausages and burgers, I actually do like. Every now and then, though. Okay, so all I'm doing here, I'm, I'm giving it a little stir around, and then when I see a little clump or a lump, I'm just uh, pressing it down. And once you, sh if you give it a shake, what happens is, it. Um, you give it a shake, it, they come to the top. I think I've got a bit of hay fever today. My nose feels like it's running and I was trying to discreetly do it and then the cameraman just pulled up. <laughs> Can't get the star. Anyway, I'm just getting rid of all, any clumps. Think about me, when I do live, I always think it's going to be really quick and then I take ages. But I never say, is actually anyone watching? <laughs> Hundreds, apparently, hundreds. Anyway, so, so I'm gonna make a well in the middle. If you have a look inside for me, please, Mr. Cameraman. And then I'm gonna pour in the wet ingredients. So it's gonna be really a lovely cake batter. It's going to be rich and spicy, and now we're just going to fold it in. Okay, so you can see you don't even need like a, any fancy equipment. Just a bit of elbow grease. What I would normally do is um, weigh out so each. Um, cake tin has an equal amount of batter. I'm not going to do that for this because it takes too long, but I did make one, one I made earlier, which I'm going to do in the next post, and I did actually weigh it out. So I'm really scraping down to make sure there's no pockets of um, sugar or flour, and I think that looks pretty mixed to me. So I'm going to try and get it as even as possible into the cake tins without making too much mess. And it's uh, not as easy as it sounds. Let's see if we can get a bit more. Oops. And I'll leave a little bit in, so if one's a bit short, I can um, Add a bit more, so give it a shake. So if you get a little bit like that on the side, just get rid of it, because that will burn. I think this one's definitely got more, and this one's definitely got less. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bake these in the oven for at least 30 minutes. Well, I'm gonna test them after 30 minutes. Probably gonna need 35, I imagine. And then we're going to let them cool. And then, as I said, my next post, I'm going to show you how to decorate. So I'll post the recipe below and uh, hopefully you'll watch my next post and decorate the cake. <laughs> 